Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Right Horn. And Jinx here. And welcome back to Humankind on the PlayStation 5. Alright, so we left off last episode just having gained this territory from Egypt. So we demanded it from her and she gave in. And uh, we've also got a couple of notifications here. We gained another population and we got a grievance. Let's take a look and see which grievance this is. Uh, we can demand more territory from her. I was about to say, if we what grievance to, could we possibly have against this one? <laughs> that she claimed that territory on our border. And say, so if we wanted to, we could claim that. Let me just see, where is this one located at? I guess it is on our border, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's touching It tips. touches right there. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I can, Jinx. No. I can make that claim. Okay. I mean, I guess you could. You think I should? Say goodnight to the bad guy. <laughs> you don't think I should? I mean, that's a stretch to say that it's on your borders, <laughs> but you do you, boo. <laughs> I say, let's <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Let's demand it. It doesn't mean she has to. Give it to us. I will not ignore what you have done without a good reason. You will make this right. So stupid, so ridiculous, so inevitable. All right, so now we're both making demands. She demands that we give her back the province we took from her. And we're demanding that she gives them gives us this one. So she's not willing to back down this time. But you can always propose a defusal. And then we'll both give up our demands. So basically, we should probably start building an army here. <laughs> because this could turn into conflict. I don't see how it possibly could. What are we doing with these guys? I guess exploring over this way. We're fighting mammoths. Riding mammoths. Oh, nice. So we found Mount Vesuvius. And we invented the work week. And now we have calendars. And everybody will be miserable from here on out. Tracking dates and stuff. Ugh. Horrible. I want to never know what day it is. <laughs> I mean, you know you got a different life if you don't know what day it is. <laughs> All right, so we did grab this location here, so that's now ours. So we're getting that established, a new outpost. It'll take five turns to actually create that outpost. And again, we should probably start getting ready for conflict. And where is the next region we might want to, to grab up? I suppose it's gonna be this one here, but it's a little far away right now. So we're gonna need to get like an additional city or something. Yeah, I guess there is a lot of distance between us and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a ways to go. Hey, look at all these goodies she's got. Like, do we even have copper? I don't think we have copper, do we? We don't even have copper, Jinx. Well, we don't know what that question mark is. It's not copper. No. Is it, it bananas? No, it's a strategic resource that we don't know about. It's probably bananas. That's not a strategic <laughs> resource, Jinx. What are you talking about? Have you ever <laughs> played Mario Kart? You're right. That is a strategic resource. You're correct, Jinx. I stand corrected. All right, so let's go ahead and get a new technology selected. We just got that calendar, which means that uh, we can now capitalize on those luxury resources that we have. Of course we can, because there's a work week. So let's get the city defense, since it'll only take one turn to get that. So not long at all. All right, so we're currently already building something here, the animal warrants. We don't have any money unfortunately to to buy that out just yet charge people to come pet your goats mm -hmm. that's what we need to do i would pay do some goat petting what zoo was that that had the crazy goats oh that was colorado oh yeah they were climbing all over everything yeah i remember them. screaming at people <laughs> <laughs> i don't recall the screaming though no, there was the one goat that was up on top of like a ladder or something uh -huh. just screaming at people. <laughs> I guess I don't remember that. Uh, do we need the carpentry? Let me just take a look here because we don't have the wood. I suppose there's a lumber yard. So yeah, those would be useful. And of course there's archers as well. 
Oh, we ran into another one of those damn elk here. Should we take him out, Jinx? You're weak. Yeah, the, the guy is kind of weak here. We should probably continue to heal up a little bit before we go getting ourselves into a fight. So we'll wait. Oh, that's the only way Never to go. Never mind. He's blocking the only... Clever elk. Mm-hmm. He's going to demand a toll. <laughs> I ain't paying any tolls. <laughs> I don't think we can get over here in time. Close. Close, but not quite. Maybe. Well, no, because it takes multiple turns. Yeah, it takes multiple turns to be able to ransack that, so that's not an option. Although that's to establish it. And she might not have the influence to add it into her city immediately. It really just depends on if she does. Because again, only in neutral territory can we, uh, which, you know, this territory here, which is just outpost and not actually hers, she's just claiming it. That territory, we could engage in aggressive actions without actually having to, uh, declare war. I'm guessing that's its home right there. So let's tear down its home first. <laughs> right in front of it. Right in front of it. It's younger there. Where the Assyrian instincts were terrible. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I'm trying to zoom in here. Yeah, I really feel like the R2 and L2 should have been left to zoom in and zoom out. Even in the city view. Because, yeah, like if I want to like zoom out to get a better look at where I'd build these artisan quarters. Can't do that. So, I'm on the fence on getting Assyrian raiders or getting the artisan quarter in these locations here. Because we do need to get those. How many turns would this take? Alright, that would take a little while. I feel like the raiders is needed more. Yeah, I feel like we need at least one raider. Yeah, so let's go ahead, especially because it's our special unit. Let's go and move them over to food. Kind of make up for this fact that we're about to use a population to get these raiders. But getting these goods are really important. And maybe we'll be able to rush them out if we can you know, produce enough money here. But yeah, with us uh, getting ag aggressive with Egypt, it would be wise. Oh, she's going over to protect it. Well, that's interesting. In fact, she might even attack us here. She hasn't yet. And then we'd be like, oh no. We are the victims here. Yeah. Unfortunately, this unit is damaged. So I don't know if we'll be able to win this or not. It's hard to say. Because I think we got... It's not full health here. 88 of 100. So let's just move around it right now and if she attacks us then we'll deal with it oh looks like it did start a battle here I didn't start that hmm okay yeah she attacked us Weird. she attacked us so I don't know if our one extra combat strength will be enough probably not yeah probably not because we have the, the 12 less health so unfortunately, I think we'll just have to retreat. Yeah, we're just gonna have to retreat, guys. I don't like retreating, but... It's like, wow, that was rude. We were just passing through. Yeah. Picking on us. Yeah, exactly. So that did result in her getting war support and us losing war support. That's the one negative there. So basically, we need more troops. If we're going to be uh, roaming around her territory. We need to rally the elk. <laughs> Onto our side. Sprinkle some acorns on your way back. Get them to follow us. I'm not sure that they eat acorns. Maybe some corn. I know they like corn. Apparently Jinx is an elk expert. She knows all about them, I guess. That's what you feed at the feed stand. <laughs> corn. Jinx got this from... From the zoo. What? No! Hunting! <laughs> you don't hunt at the zoo. And I mean, I guess you do buy corn to feed the animals. Yeah, that's what you meant when you said feed stands. <laughs> You've never even been hunting, though, have you? What are you, you talking about? Have you been hunting? Yeah. I didn't shoot. 
I've never been hunting. But I make but... a real good bird dog. <laughs> 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 I used to go hunting with my uncle. Mostly dove and like quail. Mm-hmm. I'd sit in the back of the truck and, you know, pop the necks and pluck the feathers. <laughs> Jinx is from the country. I what was... made you think that? Well, just letting everybody know. <laughs> I grew up in the city, so we didn't really go hunting and stuff. Well, we went hunting, but it was like for rats and stuff like that. Like gigantic, Gross. massive rats. It was for protecting your family because they're dangerous. Rats went hunting for me and my little toesies when I was little. All right, so this allows you to kill your population to uh, complete constructions instantly. Wow. I remember uh, Civilization, I don't know if Civ 6 has that, I don't recall, but Civ 5, I remember, oh, or Civ 4, one of them. One of remember them you did. had like slavery and you could like rush out stuff by I did killing terrible people. Things. Yeah, that's what I was going to get to. Jinx was, Jinx was like killing massive amounts of people. I had beautiful works created though. It was really bad, guys. People were in awe of my structures. <laughs> so we don't have copper, so bronze working is going to be useless to us. That's a problem. That's the reason why we got to go after her. Uh, irrigation's nice for the stability that you get and then the two plus food on the river. And we already have a lot of production. So I think we're going to go with the irrigation, guys. I think that makes the most sense for us right now. That and apparently we have flooding issues. And uh, we were able to get that scientist star. So there's another point in fame. Now, you'll notice that our stars are stacking up there. We have three uh, of a total of seven. So that's how many stars we have to get to move to the next era. And so you can see that we can get a total of three stars for each of these. So basically, if you got one star in each, then that would be enough to go to the next era. We already have two in the expansionist ones, which of course are the ones we want to get for the extra fame. But that means that you can get 21 total stars for each era and you only need seven. So generally, you'll want to stay in the era to get more stars uh, because these keep on increasing the requirements that you need to get these with each era. And so they get more difficult to get. And so you want to get as many stars as you can while also not waiting too long because then there's no cultures to select. So it's kind of a delicate balance in this game. So you gotta pick another culture? Yeah, every era you change cultures. Oh, okay. And get the, the bonuses from it. So we won't always be Assyrians? No. Mm -mm. Oh, we can't do this because we're retreating. How sad. Oh, are they chasing after me? Oh, she's on the hunt. Oh, wow, look at that. She's brave. She wants that booty. Mm-hmm, she's coming for us. Oh, oh look at elk the elk. friends. Coming to us. I was going to do a mating call, but I, I don't know. <laughs> you either. don't know the elk mating call? I mean, call. I guess I should from the hunting games we played. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm not making that sound in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to lose this unit because he's so weak. So, you know, let's not pick a fight with with these elk guys. The elk are our friends. Let's just keep on uncovering territory. There's plenty of elk to fight. Come over here. A bit later as we heal up. Haven't we uncovered everything? I think so. Uh, there's this area here, I guess. So there's just us, Egypt, and Boudicca? On this continent, yep. That's it. Oh, we did get an event here. Looks like it's in our capital. The Flooded Lands 2, so this is uh, a follow-up to that previous event. The Great Dyke was constructed in rapid time at your behest, and a provident choice it turned out about to be too. The deluge didn't relent, but despite the endless rains, Esser and its people and property remained safe, only suffering some wet and shivering skin. Better yet, the farmland became even more fertile in the rain's aftermath. All right, so the people of Esser rejoice in their leader's wise rule. And so we're going to get plus 15 food for 15 turns. So that's a huge bonus, obviously very much worth the cost. Uh, we only paid like 100-something gold. And we drastically increased the amount of food that we have. So pretty useful, guys. Yeah, I feel like that was definitely worth the investment there. All right, so I think that's everything for this turn. An emblematic unit is a living culture manifested in an organized troop. Let's see how the neighbors view it. All right, so that's talking about our new... Uh... Oh, he's got another star, by the way. got a gold star. That's talking about our new unit. This is our specialty unit here. So uh, let's move them over here so we can easily 
access them there. And we'll just take a peek at them real quick. Look at their, their stats here. They're so cool. So the Assyrian raiders, known for their sweeping raids across the deserts and plains, these horsemen seek wealth and power for the empire. The so remember, empire? they're pillagers. Generate additional money when destroying an outpost or independent camp. And so already I think we are now more powerful than she is with this unit. She's about to wreck her shit. Yeah. So we could probably declare war now if we wanted to, but the question is, do we have the war support? Probably not. I'm gonna bet she's got way more war support. Yeah, that defeat did not help us there, guys. Uh, we can add in another grievance here, though. She attacked us. You attacked us, you meanie. Though I can't seem to get it selected. There we go. So let's go ahead and demand this. We're demanding 100 gold for it. And these are important for the war as well. These are what you're going to demand in the war if you're to fight it. So we'd be demanding that territory and this hundred gold. Something from you. Lovely. The dogs are famished. All right, so it looks like she has sent us a crisis defusal uh, proposal, and we're going to uh, refuse this. Once again, you show how inadequate you are. So we'll see that our war support is going to increase more the next turn here. All right, so let's go and take out this sanctuary and get that beautiful gold here. So we'll get that, and then we'll go after her location here. Let me see if she added it. She did not. She did not have the influence yet, so we might be able to take it out. And then I suppose we'll want to get these guys moving over to this location here. And then our new raiders. I suppose we'll prepare for, for battle. Get ready to attack her uh, capital city here. Does she have any other locations yet? She does not. Just that one. We could also go see if they could get there quickly to raid. And maybe to help out in a, a battle against those scouts. Yeah, let's go and bring them in. Let's just go take a peek. Yeah. Because we're not really ready for the war just yet. We're trying to get our war support up. A little bit higher first. Because we don't want to go to war when she has significantly more war support than we do. Uh, looks like we found something here. Found some goodies. Alright, so let's just keep on moving. Look at all these animals everywhere. Goodness. Yeah, they are deep. Alright, so we did finish up with that construction of the unit. And so next, let's get the artisan quarters. So the question is, should we get the ebony? If we do, we'll get that bonus. Plus four stability in all of our cities, plus three industry, and plus three industry uh, for the administrative center. So that's main plaza and administrative center. And then we won't be able to get the wondrous effect yet, but we will get those bonuses. So basically, you're getting an industry for ebony, or we could do incense, in which case it's basically money. You're getting that stability as well. And we have a lot of incense, so we could potentially get the wondrous effect for this one since we have so much of it seems you need to have four and we have three so we need to get one more location of incense uh, we also have two locations of the papyrus and that gives you that might be what we want actually because that gives you science so getting tech quicker would be probably be worth it i think yeah you know what i think that's what we should get let's get the papyrus so we can make that cash monies. Why can we not put it here? It's not oh, we haven't territory. we haven't added that yet. That's right. So it'd be two twenty five to add. So it's gonna take too long. I don't really like putting this one up here on the uh, right on the border, but yeah, it's fine. I don't like it either. We want that science jinx. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> We got some notifications you need to take a look at. Can I always miss the notifications? I really feel like they need to adjust the way they show you those. Because sometimes it can be really important. Yeah, this is just a tiny little, hey, look at me. Mm -hmm. If you got time or if you feel like it. Yeah. It's not really screaming out to you the way it should. All right, so let's go ahead and just go up to here. Oh, you know what? Actually, whoa, let's stop here. Because I'm going to attack them to get that war score. You got to declare war. Nope. Well, so we are in their territory. I didn't realize she was in her. 
Oh, damn. That's why. She's just outside of our territory. Or outside of the uh, neutral territory. Maybe she'll attack you. No, I don't <laughs> think so, Jinx. These guys are way better than those little scouts. Like, whoa, look at them ponies, yeah. yo. She's impressed with their ponies. All right. So we'll bring the scouts back in. I think the ponies will get there first. And they get the increased money there. However, if we allow the ponies to destroy it, then we can't take it in the war, though. So I'm just hoping that threatening it might make her scouts go to defend it, maybe. I don't know. We can't declare war yet, so there's not really anything else to do. We can take a look at what our, our war support is, see if it's up to her level yet. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. We'll see. Are you wine? If we're around her level. We're at 61, she's at 73. Ours is going up quicker. So it gets to that level where it needs to be at. So each turn it's going up by more. Hmm, I feel like we should wait. Though, did she just come out of her territory? Yeah. Nope. Oh, she, she just added oh, it. Sure did. So we wouldn't be able to destroy it anyways. All right, so yeah, we can't attack her since we're in her territory. So is the war support, like, how much your people support you going to war? Yeah, basically. And uh, without the war support, basically, you can win. And I've seen this happen. We've seen this happen in our PC series, actually. You can win the war. Like, you've won all the battles, but then actually lose it. Just because your people are pissed? Yeah, just because your people don't support you anymore. And so then you, you know, basically won all the battles and lost the war. And everything's un in, like, unrest. Well, it's not necessarily like that. It's just you can't, uh, you can't keep the war going. Oh. Because your people don't support you. So think... Like Nam. I mean, yeah, I guess Vietnam would be an example where, you know, the American people didn't support the war. The example I was going to use is thinking Germany in World War One. Oh, okay. You know, Germany didn't win all the battles of course but you know they won on the eastern front and on the west it was still kind of a stalemate and yet germany lost the war because you know their people no longer supported them continuing it so they had to they had to make peace and and the peace treaty i guess that's the most important point there is the peace treaty was not one that you'd expect based on the actual battles like who won battles and who lost them because uh, the peace treaty was very unfavorable for Germany. Uh, so we have two options here. Mercenary armies or assimilated peoples. But do we want to use our influence for this? When uh, this is all regarding indi uh, the independent peoples. So probably not. Yeah, we're going to want to to wait. Because we haven't even found any in independent peoples. I think, uh, I think they don't pop up until a certain period. Uh, wait a minute. There's independent peoples there. There's one. Oh, so those are like the city states. Yep, basically. And here's another one. Oh, and this new? Yep. They just pop up like daisies? Yep, they pop up. Okay. And so these will have ideologies, and so how well you get along with them will be based off of how your how well your ideologies match up with theirs. Well, that person's violent. Well, they're violent towards us. The ideologies are collectivism and liberty. And so if we were collectivist and, you know, had a more liberty focused ideology, then they would like us more. And this is authority and tradition. Oh, so they're more peaceful towards us? Yeah, they're peaceful right now. That means they start out peaceful. While they start out violent. And so we cannot do the patronage. It cannot be done as you must wait for this outpost to begin a city. And so they're just now forming. So essentially, this is the period where you can destroy them. It's a little baby city. Yeah. So they're just now popping up here, which is probably why that civic is now unlocked, is because independent people are on the map. And so there's two ways to interact with those. And let me just take a look at where we're at on her. Yeah, we're still sitting at 61. It's not really going up right now, unfortunately. I feel like it won't matter if we defeat her real quick. Then it won't really matter that uh, she has the higher war support. So I think we probably could go ahead and go to war. Let's get these guys out of here. 
and uh, get them moving down here where we'll be able to do the the siege with all of our units. So we want to have like two full size armies of of four essentially is what I'm thinking. But yeah, there's two ways to interact with those independent peoples. So you can give them patronage or you invest into them and eventually you can try and annex them like peacefully or you can just like use their armies. Did we just get attacked up there again? So she can attack us in her territory, but we can't attack. Interesting. Hmm. If we could get this guy over there. Oh, we can't even do that anyways. It looks like reinforcing requires a technology. Oh. Normally you can reinforce an army that's in a battle. You can't just show up? No. I'm like, hey, friend. Apparently we need a tech to do that. I want to fight too. Now we do have the higher combat strength. Remember this unit is damaged. He only has 88 health. So the situation isn't any better. But if we retreat again, then we lose. I feel like we should just do the battle. Yeah, because we're going to be cowards. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. If we set up somewhere good... Toot the war horn. Let's see. Where could we deploy our unit? At the very least, we'd want to be right there. And then move up onto the hill. But she's probably going to attack us on the hill, won't she? Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to avoid her attacking us on that hill. Because, yeah, she's going to play right here, and then she'll come up on the hill and attack down. Giving us a huge disadvantage there. Maybe here, because I think that's a cliff, so I don't think she'll be able to attack. I think this here is a cliff. Maybe. It's hard to tell sometimes if those are cliffs or not. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we'll just find out. So let's end deployment. Yeah, that's a cliff. So she does attack from here. She took more damage than we did. Excellent, that's exactly what we wanted to see. So now we're about equal in strength. And so we could do an attack here, but let's not. Let's get up on the hill instead. Is she gonna go get your flag? She might. But I think we have like a turn. Oh, she's already got it now. Yeah, she just went and took it. But you still get a turn to, to deal with it. You have the rest of the, the match, I mean. And so we can attack her from downhill now. Or from uphill. Or yeah, attack downhill towards her. But I don't know if we're going to have enough time to win this. Looks like we'll have, yep, just the last round. So it worked out great for us. So we won. But yeah, taking the flag will allow you to just kind of sit there and not do anything and win it. But if you're in a poor position like that where you're downhill, then obviously that's not a good idea to do it. So we won that. So that's what she gets. But we'll probably want to get this unit out of here because it's really weak now. Although I don't know if she has any units left. Probably not. I haven't seen any running around. Yeah, that might have been her only unit. Because she thought she was going to go make all the friends. <laughs> Little did she know. Little did she know that she was next to the Assyrians. <laughs> Alright, so do we want to go ahead and declare war now? Let's just take a look at that war support see how things hey, have changed. Man. So we're at 64 and it's going to be going up higher. And we can do another grievance now as well. And that's I another... just now found these numbers you were talking about. I was like, where the okay. hell are yeah. you looking? <laughs> up at the top there. So let's give it one more turn. Before we declare war. I mean, to be fair, she did start all this shit. Yeah, she attacked us first. Let's remember what's going on here, guys. I didn't start this. She started it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get these armies combined and get up on the borders. I suppose we should have went right there. I love how the ponies are so chill. Just relaxing. Just sauntering along. Or they're not able to combine yet. Okay, then we don't want to do that. Let's have them go here. And then we'll have them just wait a turn. And yeah, we'll invade her in the next turn. So we just finished up the construction of the artisan quarters. So let's go ahead and do another one. Because yeah, we're now getting these benefits here, guys. With the extra science. And so we'll research a lot faster. 
And so I think we're going to do maybe the, the money for the incense. Although getting more industry makes a lot of sense too, because then we can construct all these uh, artisan quarters faster. So maybe we should do that. Yeah, we'll get that. Uh, there's also a lumber yard, which would increase our industry quite a bit too. All right, so I think that's it for this turn, and then we're gonna attack her in the next turn, and then we'll see see how this war goes. So be our first full war here. Uh, we got an event, a game of prophecy. With the empire thriving, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces catching your eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, you play the game under instruction in your palace court. But the event has a sting in it in the tail. He threw me off there. <laughs> the game is reckoned to be a form of divination as well as entertainment. Gasps could be heard as the game's prophecy become clear. You are fated to lose everything. What will you do? <laughs> All right, so just wanted to see what these are pushing us towards. This is authority. This is liberty. And this is tradition. So we'll probably want to go towards liberty of all these, but let's just see what the authority. actual things we get here. So we can say silence. If this prophecy spreads, the results could be devastating. Every witness should be paid off. That'll cost or us money. killed. Yeah, I guess you can come off. Cut their tongues out. They can't tell the story. <laughs> but all that costs money too, Jinx. Because you got to pay somebody to... It costs to... nothing to cut tongues out. you got to pay the person who's doing the I'll cutting. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could overlook, let the people gossip, and the prophecy will soon be proved to be false. But that will reduce stability. Or heed, you must listen to the divination and prepare for the worse. And we'll lose science. I say let's overlook. I know Jinx wants to silence these folks, but I don't want to pay him. I don't want to pay him either. <laughs> we'll just take the stability I loss. Want bargain silencing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I was going to put these guys in here, and that's, I think, uh, we're ready for this conflict because, I mean, we got a huge army compared to hers, anyways. And so it's not like this is going to be an extremely challenging good? conflict. We now have more war support than she does. Uh, but you need 80 war support to be able to do a regular war. Hmm. Good grief. So many rules. So many rules. We could do the surprise war. Surprise, bitch. And get the traitor. <laughs> but that gives them the 10 war support. But you know what? I really don't think war support's going to be a problem, guys. Because we're going to win every war, every battle with her. And so I think we should be okay. So let's just, let's just do the surprise war. She looks really no nervous. She should be. Or mad, I can't tell. War, whether you're ready or not. All right, so remember, I truly despise you. we're now a traitor. So we get those bonuses. But there's also penalties for being a traitor as well. We were never friends. So since we can't reinforce, that means we can't actually bring both armies into the battle. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't think about that fact. So we just want to have the full strength army here. So you notice that she has... A strength 39 that is because she will have city defenders so your, your city does have its own defenders and I really like that because I don't like when you have to keep like people at home all the time yeah for defending purposes like oh y'all are just gonna sit in the city and let people take you yeah like the citizens wouldn't rise up they're just like oh there's a new leader in town <laughs> <laughs> so let's get the best of these units here and then transfer them into this army. Let's see how we're going to do this. I guess we'll just go like this and then we'll have to wait a turn, I think, to be able to attack. We'll see if they'll let us. Yeah, it doesn't look like they can move yet. They lost all their movement points. And so we'll have to wait. Until next turn. That's okay. We'll have these guys go over here. And then we'll do our first uh, siege and our first real war. So having very early conflict here, much like the PC series, though that was not that was not me being the aggressor. In the PC series, I was being aggressively attacked by others, <laughs> just trying to survive. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to wait another turn since we can't do the reinforces uh, later. You can just reinforce 
and so that's not really a problem. Because you can bring multiple armies. Paper. What else do we need to plan? Look at that bear. Ooh. He's looking to be destroyed. Somebody hurt him. He's miserable. He's sick and dying. He just wants someone to put him out of his misery. Oh, I'm gonna hug it. (laughs) Yeah, go take him out, Jinx. Uh, What did we need? Was it? Just need some honey. Was it 240 influence to add that location? Something like that. We did get irrigation. Some kind of number. <laughs> Jinx said some kind of number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got our army in here. Though, is this the area we want to attack from? Okay, so we're actually on a river right now. And we're hugging those cliffs. Yeah. Probably not the best area to attack from, honestly. Might want to go around the city here, now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, you know what, let's go around and attack on the other end. Or we'll just be in a... We'll be in a better position. Yeah, this is a pretty cruddy position, honestly. Yeah, there's not much move, room to move around there. Mm-hmm. Alright, so we'll continue exploring over yonder. Follow me, I know the way. And then... I guess these guys can just continue moving this way. And then this guy here, should we fight the bear? I mean, he is weak. Yeah, he's pretty weak. I feel bad for him, though. I feel like we're putting him out of his misery, honestly. He just needs a snack. A little (laughs) pick-me-up. Just a little bit of honey. He'll be good to go. Alright, so we're going to do this manual battle, even though it's not going to be much of a battle. I suppose we'll just want to get up on this hill here. So it's going to enter deployment. And then, uh, we'll, we'll try waiting and see if he attacks us. He does. I told you he just wanted to die, Jinx. He ran right towards us. That's what they do. They're silly. Alright, we got an event here if you want to read it, Jinx. An unexpected rivalry has erupted between two temples in Asur, each representing a different sect of Assyrian shamanism. One temple argues that religious matters should be left in the hands of the dispassionate men, while the other contends that only women, with their capacity for nurturing life, possess the necessary understanding for these affairs. These quarrels must stop before your inhabitants start fighting each other. Who should your religious who should be your religious leaders? So we can choose men, women, or just let anybody be a religious leader, which is what I kind of think. Yeah. If you want to be a religious leader, you should be able to. And that'll move us towards progress. These are both tradition. Yeah, I feel like just let anybody who wants to be a leader. Just whatever, man. Yeah. I think that's the best way to do it. Also, we did finish up the researching of irrigation. Uh, So let's go ahead and get... It, does masonry do anything else for us besides being able to beat our people? <laughs> so get, we've got to work. We week. get the stone works. We've got ditches to dig. <laughs> now we need to be able to beat our people. Well, once we win this war, we'll have copper. Although, you know what? We might not because I don't think we have any right to take her. I don't know if we'll be able to take over this city of hers. We'll what, have to see. What will there be? Well, because we, we are demanding that other location. Oh. So we're not going to just like conquer and be like, this is mine. I don't know if we'll be able to. It kind of just depends on the situation. We'll have to see. So this is that kind of strategy game, I see. (laughs) And so, yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to take her main city or not. Maybe. But yeah, we could get the, I mean, we already have a lot of buildings that we can construct right now. Let me just see here what's, there's the reinforcements. We really need that. All this requires the uh, the copper. Uh, that's useful for attacking walls. And then, of course, roads are always nice to have because you move faster. Uh, riding. Reduce the influence cost of civics. Very helpful. Market quarters. Food markets. And the house of scribes. So a lot of useful stuff here, honestly. What do you think, Jinx? just get, like, ladies hanging around, like, taking care of their needs. I kind of feel like that is the lady of the house overwatching this worker. Oh, okay, that's not all what deviously. I was 
she's over. She's yes. Like, mm, yeah, write that book. I feel like I'm she's over his shoulders. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's one interpretation <laughs> of it. <laughs> he looks awfully sad to me. I don't know. If he had that lady behind him wanting to rub his shoulders, I feel like he wouldn't have that miserable looking <laughs> face on him. He's doing the finances. <laughs> <laughs> to me, she's just standing up over him. Like, how much is this woman going to Like, I've got me? all the power right now. And <laughs> I've got all these workers working for me, and it's beautiful. But writing feels like it'd be a smart thing to get, right? What do you think? Writing jinx? If we had the copper, and if I knew for sure we we're going to get the copper, I'd go with the bronze working, but I'm not sure if we'll get it or not. So I feel like writing is a good investment for us right now, guys. Even though that one's in the next level, and so it's kind of expensive as far as the uh, the research costs there. Uh, but unfortunately, we will have to end today's episode here, so we'll have to do the battle in the next episode. We'll attack from this location up here, guys. That's what I'm thinking. So that we're not on the it's river. nice and flat. Yeah, I didn't see that there was a river here. This is a terrible location. Up along the cliff isn't a big deal. But uh, being on the river is. That's pro uh, kind of a problem. And so probably shouldn't attack from there. Or right there. And should be somewhere around this area instead. So that'll take us a couple turns to get around there. It gives her some more time to repair, unfortunately. But I think it'll be fine. Alright, so we'll end today's episode here. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.